Today on the Chuck Heston mini disaster movie. It began as just another day at the office until suddenly. Suddenly. Sud, 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 suddenly. Damn! 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 Damn, damn! Silence! 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 Damn! Silence! Damn! Silence! Damn! Silence! Damn! Silence! You buddy butt tripe! Damn it! Silence, you effervescent jughead! Damn it! Silence, you wiggy little bow tart! Damn it! Silence, you branching puppet turd! Damn it! Silence, you constipated poppycock! Damn it! Silence, you pissy little poop skunk! Damn it! Silence, you vibrating butt parade! Damn it! Silence, you tipsy little tinkerbell! Got too much body hair. Silence, you fat, greasy cracker. Damn it. Silence, you cock short cabana boy. Damn it. I forgot to laugh. I like Aunt Jemima. Don't force me to get all syrupy on your ass. <laughs> yes, sir. The president stained my dress. Take me to the creek and beat me with a rock. My big nude scene. Oh, my God. It feels so good. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, slow down. Oh yeah. Oh, who's your Moses? Who's your Moses? Oh my God. Oh yeah. Finger my pooper. Yeah, finger my pooper. Oh, that feels so good. Yeah, just part my red cheeks. Oh my God, I love it when you. Oh, oh no. Slow down. Must think about Silent Green. Oh. Go! Oh! I lost my virginity. Don't move. 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 I'll get you a shroud. Quickly! Stick me like a pig with this cattle prod. I've got lice. A maniac on television talking about gun control. Uh, actually, Chuck, that's you. Silence! I like frilly underwear. Don't force me to give her a bottle on your ass. Oh, uh, yes, sir! Later today on the Chuck Heston mini disaster movie. Be there. I'm going to try something new just for you guys. Okay. okay. Cool. This is one I haven't finished writing. But yeah, I'm and the new one. See how it goes over. It's called, uh, What If The Guy From Smashing Pumpkins Lost His Car Keys. <laughs> <laughs> Where the f are my car keys? They were right here in my hand. And I'm just a second I <laughs> Did I leave them in the kitchen? <laughs> Underneath the cushions of the couch. I can't find them anywhere. In oh, here they are. That's what I <laughs> Come with us once again to that magical, mythical land of Fa, which was ruled with wisdom and kindness by that most beloved of rulers, the Fa King. You knew that. It was February, and that meant it was time for the annual cockfighting tournament in the land of Fa. The king was especially excited, for he had spent many years breeding and selecting, training and breeding, again until he thought he had the best fighting rooster in all the known world. Oh, I'm so excited! He told the Grand Vizier. Yes, sire, the other kings and nobles from all over the world have sent their best roosters to your realm for the tournament. Your day is come. I can't wait! The tournament opened with much pomp and celebration, and soon the preliminary bouts were underway. The Fa King's rooster was magnificent. Look! Look! Our King's cock is really big! Surely the Fa King's cock will win this tournament. And so it went. Battle after battle, the Fa King's rooster emerged victorious again and again, until finally it was the last fight for the world championship. The Fa King's rooster facing down another big mean rooster from the land of Bent. Oh! 
The Fa King said to his Grand Vizier. That bent cock doesn't stand a chance. Put all my money on my cock, hands down. Yes, sire. And so the fight began. At first, the Fa King's rooster took the initiative, but soon the rooster from the land of Bent lunged on the attack and slashed the Fa King's bird viciously. Oh no, Grand Vizier! The Fa King lamented. My cock is bleeding! Yes, sire, it looks serious, too. But the Fa King's rooster rallied, and soon he defeated the bird from the land of Bent. Hooray! Hooray for my fighting cock! The king shouted with joy. Hooray! Hooray! The people of Fa shouted. Our Fa King cock is a mighty cock! Our Fa King cock is the biggest, strongest cock in the whole wide world. And taunting the king and the people from the land of Bent, they chanted, You can't lick our cock no matter how hard you try. <laughs> oh, I am so gratified with my cock's success. The Fa King told his Grand Vizier, But I'm bored with cockmanship now. I want a new hobby. I have just the right pastime for you, sire. The Grand Vizier suggested. Oh, really? And what is that? You enjoyed breeding roosters, sire. Why not take up breeding dogs and win a few shows? Splendid idea, Grand Vizier. I'm so good with cocks. How could I go wrong with bitches? Pablo Francisco. Good morning. Hey, How man. are you? What's up, Smokey? Yeah, I'm much just tired, getting up, trying to get out there. <laughs> are you up and you moving? You moving? I'm telling you, I am so tired. I am so tired. How right tired now. are you? I am so tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I need Viagra. I need something. You need Viagra. <laughs> I need something to get me up. Here's Johnny Carson on cocaine. You already tried this one. I am so wasted. I am so. I am. So, I am so high right now. I am so high. I can put a Yugo in orbit. I, I, I'm, okay, I'm a little paranoid. I'm a little. I'm a little paranoid. Is that a new drummer, Doc? Is that, Ed, can you bounce for him? What, is that a new drummer? I try. Uh, Spanish Johnny Carson. Since I'm Spanish, here we go. Uh, hola, buenas noches. Yo soy Johnny Carson. Uh, mi amigo se llama Ed McMahon. Hola, Ed. ¿Cómo estás? Ho, 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 ho. Si! Sí. Ho, ho, ho. Macho, borracho, pendejo. You are. <laughs> Spanish Channel's the Univision. best one. Univision. Yeah, Univision. Yeah. Univision. Yeah. Yeah, they have Jerry Seinfeld in Spanish there. Is that the way they really? Yeah, they'd be... <laughs> Oye, Jerry, y Julia está loca. Oh, you claim a puff of all. Do this, us local. Okay, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm a little off. I call it a little. I call it a little India here because they're from people from India own everything around this. A little India, yeah. yeah. It's like who owns a video store? <laughs> <laughs> Who owns the gas station? <laughs> <laughs> they always get the Indian guy whistles when he talks too. Like, where's where? Where can I go to Lincoln Memorial? What you need to do? Go down. <laughs> I'll do it down. Oh, well, look at that pretty girl. Wit you. All right, keep going. <laughs> You know, have you ever seen an Indian guy do karaoke before? Have you seen an Indian guy? No. That is hilarious. And like, you got to rock, steady, steady, rocking all night long. <laughs> okay, we're going to bring Saeed to the karaoke stage. Saeed's going to sing Staying Alive. <laughs> oh, you can't tell, but the way I use my walk, I'm a woman's man. No time to dot. Okay. That's <laughs> No time to die. No time to die. Boy, the weather here is beautiful too. It was great. Yeah. I was up in Las Vegas. It was like, it was so, it was hot. It was hot. I was opening up for Aaron Neville. Is it just me or does Aaron Neville sing like you're trying to find a radio station? You were listening as like, <laughs> hit hot note, hit hot. Traffic on the tan. No. I swear, I swear to God, is this? And he shakes when he sings. He should talk about that little piece of almond joy he got there. What up? What up? Look at this face. I know to hear such a win. Look at this nugget, so big and proud and growing. I oh, will not do that to his face. They should come out with an Indian cop movie. Wouldn't that be cool? Indian, Indian cop, cop movie. Maybe. Get ready for a whole new breed of cop. TJ Hooker, stand aside. Beretta, I don't think so. From the Middle East comes. Pantani! <laughs> Action. Get down! Desire. I want you. 
<laughs> There's always action and desire going always, on. Always action. Always desire. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Morgan Freeman, Keanu Reeves, they knew too much. We know too much. <laughs> they went. <laughs> they went too far. We went too far. <laughs> we did. Can we? <laughs> Action. <laughs> that's, the only, that's, that's the only thing that guy could do for a living, you know? He, could, he couldn't be a mechanic. Say, so, hey, how much for that transmission? An arm and a leg. <laughs> Good Lord. Get lost. You're evil. <laughs> I met a man and now I'm his wife He is weird, he sits around and watches spies all night And calls up triple X websites Well he's not the man that I once adored He just stares at old videos starring Tracy Lords And goes to the adult bookstore, the magazines he always Shows a woman with three guys They're getting it on He's obsessed with porn Now it's on again Those breasts can't be real On all the lesbians Riding naked on the floor He gets so happy when Jenna Jameson squeals Don't understand why men Are addicted to hardcore Stays up way too late Watching lots of porn It's a little, uh, little cyber sex conversation Yes That we put together for you <laughs> Hello, sweetheart What do you look like? I am wearing a red silk blouse Mini skirt and high heels I work out Every day, I'm toned and perfect. My measurements are 36, 24, 36. What do you look like? I'm six foot three inches and about 250 pounds. I wear glasses and I have on a pair of blue sweatpants I just bought from Walmart. <laughs> I'm also wearing a t-shirt with a few spots of barbecue sauce on it from dinner. It smells funny. I want you. Would you like to screw me? Okay. We're in my bedroom. There's soft music playing on the stereo and candles on my dresser and night table. I'm looking up into your eyes, smiling. My hand works its way down to your crotch and begins to fondle your huge, swelling bulge. Yeah. I'm gulping. I'm beginning to sweat. I'm pulling up your shirt and kissing your chest. Now I'm unbuttoning your blouse. My hands are trembling. I'm moaning softly. I'm taking hold of your blouse and sliding it off slowly. I'm throwing my head back in pleasure. The cool silk slides off my warm skin. <laughs> I'm rubbing your bulge faster, pulling and rubbing. My hand suddenly jerks spastically and <laughs> accidentally rips a hole in your blouse. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It wasn't really too expensive. I'll pay for it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm wearing a lacy black bra. My soft breasts are rising and falling yes. as I breathe harder and harder. Damn. I'm fumbling with the clasp on your bra. I think it's stuck. Do you have any scissors? I take your hand and kiss it softly. Mm -hmm. I'm reaching back, undoing the clasp. The bra slides off my body. The air <laughs> caresses my breasts. Ooh. My nipples are erect for you. Ooh. How did you do that? <laughs> I'm picking up the bra and inspecting the clasp. I'm running my fingers through your hair. Now I'm nibbling your ear. I suddenly sneeze. 
Your breasts are covered with spit and phlegm. <laughs> what? I'm so sorry. <laughs> really? I'm wiping your phlegm off my breasts with the remains of my blouse. Oh, that's dangerous. I'm taking the sopping wet blouse from you. I drop it with a plow. I'm pulling up my mini skirt. <laughs> I'm out of here. Take off my panties. <laughs> I'm pulling off your panties. My tongue is going all over, in and out, nibbling on you. Uh, wait a minute. What's the matter? <laughs> You're a man. His tongue was uh, I've got uh, pubic hair <laughs> caught in my throat. <laughs> I'm choking. Are you okay? I hate when that happens. I'm having a coughing fit. <laughs> I'm turning all red. Can I help? I'm running to the kitchen. <laughs> Choking wildly. I'm fumbling through the cabinets looking for a cup. Where do you keep your cups? I'm bending over the bed. Give it to me, baby. I have to pee. I'm fumbling my way blindly across the room and toward the bathroom. Hurry back, lover. I find the bathroom and it's dark. I'm feeling around for the toilet. I lift the lid. I'm waiting eagerly for your return. I'm done going. I'm feeling around for the flush handle, but I can't find it. Uh-oh. What's the matter now? What a dream. I've realized that I've peed into your laundry handle. <laughs> Sorry again. I'm walking back to the bedroom now, blindly feeling my way. Mmm, yes. Oh, God. Okay, I'm coming to put my, you know, thing in your, you know, woman's thing. Yes. Do it, baby. Do it. I'm touching your smooth butt. It feels so nice. I kiss your neck. Mm, I'm having a little trouble here. I'm moving my ass back and forth, moaning. I can't stand it another second. Slide in. Do me now. Uh, I'm flaccid. What? I'm limp. I can't sustain an erection. I'm standing up and turning around. An incredulous look on my face. I'm shrugging with a sad look on my face. My wiener all floppy. I'm going to get my glasses and see what's wrong. No, no, never mind. I'm getting dressed. I'm putting on my underwear. And my now sopping wet I'm blouse. putting on my wet, nasty <laughs> blouse. Ripped up. No, wait. Ah, uh, now I'm squinting, trying to find the night table. I'm feeling along the dresser, knocking over cans of hairspray, <laughs> picture frames, and your candles. I'm buttoning my blouse. Now I'm putting on my shoes. Hey, I found my glasses. I'm putting them on. My God. One of our candles fell on the curtain. Uh, oh, the curtain is on fire. I'm pointing at it. I've got a, sh uh, a shocked look on my face. Go to hell. <laughs> I'm logging off, you loser. Now the carpet is on fire. <laughs> oh, no. Never mean it no harm. Beats all you never saw. Been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. Hello. Hey, Larry the Cable Guy. Hello. Hello. 
Congratulations, Lopez. Thank you, Larry. Well, Lopez, I went ahead and did some research, traced into your career, and kind of written down a summary. Uh oh. God bless Lopez. <laughs> it all started at a 7,000 watt radio station slash laundromat in a small Mexican town. <laughs> In a small Mexican town. And the son of a tamale cook, <laughs> little Lopez, began his broadcast career doing odds and ends. Doing odd and end jobs at KMART. KMART. <laughs> in the music department. <laughs> little Lopez was then moved to the garden department. After he told a female cashier that his pinga was muy grande. <laughs> <laughs> Little Lopez loved Paul Harvey. He dreamt of being a Mexican Paul Harvey. <laughs> he also dreamed of being anal probed by two Tijuana whores. <laughs> Little Lopez got his feet wet in broadcasting for the first time when on the way to launder ponchos... The family mule broke a leg, and they flagged down a trucker, and the little Lopez got on the CB, and a broadcaster was born. He worked that CB like a pro. Breaker uno nueve. Breaker, Breaker uno nueve. Lopez crooned as if he was born with a CB. Breaker uno nueve. <laughs> And in the distance came a trucker's reply. Speak English, a goddamn wet man. <laughs> Lopez learned two things from that night. One, that he wanted to broadcast for a living. And two, speak English or get your ass kicked at a Beaumont truck stop. <laughs> Lopez first worked at a 7,000 watt radio station slash laundromat. His job was to fold towels and then do the news at the half hour. <laughs> Holding towels. Lopez lost that job when one night when filling in for famous Mexican DJ Wolfman Guillermo. <laughs> He went crazy and played a B.J. Thomas record right in the middle of a commercial-free Freddy Fender weekend. <laughs> Lopez was fired for that little stunt and for tumble-drying two small kids that called him fatty. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's right. For five years, Lopez hit rock bottom. He made money pimping whores and selling speakers out of a van. <laughs> he was about to end his life one afternoon by going to a country bar and yelling, Merle Haggard sucks. <laughs> <laughs> when in a moment of instance he slid open the blue, green, and orange curtain in his van and saw a vision of the Virgin Mary on his back window right next to a poster of Cheech Marin. <laughs> the Virgin said not to give up on his dream of broadcasting. She then called him fatty and disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so Lopez moved to Baltimore and hit the big time. That's right. That's right, yeah. After BSing the PD and blowing the GM, yes. uh -huh. he got on the 98 Ross Morning Show. And to this day, Lopez continues to, to do blow the, news. To blow the GM. Paul Harvey would be proud. Yes, <laughs> That's my little tribute to Lopez. Oh, oh God, oh, golf Larry. clap for Larry. Oh, oh, man. I'm feeling kind of down, do we do down, down. Feeling kind of down, do we do down, down. Cause breaking up's not hard to do. You freaking whore, why did you leave? My heart is beating here up on my sleeve. You stinking bitch, you know I love you. 
Yes, breaking up's not hard to do. You skanky ho, get off my back. Okay, I'm sorry, now will you come back? Fine, just get out and take your crap with you. Yes, breaking up's not hard to do. I guess that breaking up's not hard to do. If you drop dead, I wouldn't feel blue. Took all of your blouses and cut off the sleeves. Do you think we could have sex just one more time before you freaking leave? I hope you die, you hateful slut. I hope you get hit by a freaking truck. But if you date another man, I'm gonna go out and slash his tires, pee in his gas tank, wait for him outside of his job with a baseball bat, knock his ass out, tie him up, throw him in the truck of my car, and take him out in the woods and bury him in a shallow grave. Guess breaking up's not hard to do. Till a while back, Celine Dion just could sing in English, but she couldn't really speak English. Yeah, she couldn't really speak English. Yeah. Right? They, they gave her lessons or something when she started, when she became a star here. She's, really? been, she's yeah. been learning English. Yeah. Uh, wow. Let's listen in. Okay, repeat after me. I suck. You suck. No, no, I'm the tutor. You are our Celine. I am Celine. I am Celine and I suck. I am Celine and I suck. Very good. I am Celine and I suck very good. Oh, okay. I am Celine and my music sucks. I am Celine and my music just sucks. N not, not she sucks, just sucks. My music just sucks. And we are all tired of that stupid song. We are all tired of, of... That stupid song. Stupid song. Nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. Because... Because it sucks. Very good. Okay, next lesson. I am Celine. I am Celine. And I blow horse turds. And I blow... Or... Horse. 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 Now, you know, learning a different language can be tough, Basil. She, she's doing a very good job. <laughs> she's coming right along there. Yes, she is. I'm going down through Hill Park. I'm going to have myself a time. Friendly faces everywhere. Humble folks without temptation. I'm going down through Hill Park. I'm going to leave my woes behind. Through Hill Park, gonna see if I can't unwind. So come on down through Hill Park and meet some friends of mine. Welcome to the 40th annual Baltimore City School Tournament. Today it's Curly versus PS129. We're gonna kick ass! Children, during this portion of the competition, we'll give you a word and we want you to use it in a sentence correctly. PS129, We'll start with you. That's right, yeah, bring it on, Whitey. The first word is... Hotel. Khalid, you take it. Yeah, like I gave my girlfriend the crabs and the hotel everybody. <laughs> what? We're sorry, that is wrong. Curly? <laughs> Somebody give me some lake trout. I'm hungry. Dark man, you're hungry because you're fat. As a matter of fact, you're so fat, your cereal bowl comes with a lifeguard. I'm not fat, I've just got a low metabolism. The next word is... Seldom. PS129, it's your turn again. Let me do it. Don't f*** up, dark man. All right. My cousin gave me two tickets to the OEO's game, and I sell them to buy a candy bar. <laughs> God damn it, dark man. But I did. A candy bar? Just what you need, fat boy. I'm not fat. My clothes are just a little small. Dark man, you're so fat when you fall down, you rock yourself to sleep trying to get up. Children, we've got one word left, and that word is... Odyssey. P.S. 129, you need to get this to stay alive. Odyssey. Yeah, that one's easy. I told my homies, yo, you ought to see the sweater meat on that hoe. Damn, that shit's fat. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, but you lose. F*** you! Children! Try this one! The word is cat! You mean like what I might wear on my head, except in the past tense? No, like what you got in your ass, present tense! <laughs> oh my god! He capped Whitey! Yeah! So what's the deal here? Do we have uh, some sort of contest going on? Well, we got a got a couple ladies on the phone here, Mark, who uh, want to um, uh, show us their ability to give a Scott, uh, Scott Erickson orgasm. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, look, if you're going to be with number 19, the pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles, you got to have the sound. You got to have the sound down. Mm. Who you do know? we have here on line one? Uh, this is Kelly. Let's hear how it would go if Scott Erickson was working. Uh, if he was on the pitcher's mound on Jerry Mathers, how would it go? Brady Anderson up two floors away. Oh, hold, man. hold on, because we have somebody who's going against you. Okay? Damn, that was okay. good. Very good, Kelly. Hold on. All right, now who's this? Donna. Yeah. Donna. Donna. Let's hear it, Donna. Right now. Yeah. to get you a towel. <laughs> very, oh. very good. Donna, hold on, okay? Oh. I, I think we might have to have two winners so far. <sighs> we have one more contestant. I don't know if I can handle one more. One more contestant. Who's this? Tracy. Okay, okay. Tracy. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Oh, Scotty. Oh. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh, God, oh, 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 yeah, baby. Uh, what, three winners? <laughs> three winners! <laughs> Uh, hold on, Tracy. Okay. So, Mark, what's going on in sports? Oh, well, Scott Erickson threw a <laughs> shutout yesterday. <laughs> We're so sorry, Joseph Albert. We're so sorry, but you've got no one to blame. We're so sorry, angry Albert. But they're booing you. At home and you get 80 grand a game You're so sorry Freaking Albert But you haven't cracked a bloody smile all day We're so sorry Joseph Albert You're a boil on the buttocks Of the city by the bay Nice as nice could be But then in spring training Around day three He flipped out Flipped out He threw a chair in the locker room And made everybody shout He's the same old Albert Albert He's a screwed up guy Just get change our Albert Albert Here's his ass goodbye
that leads us to uh, something that we made up. Uh, it is a uh, <laughs> exclusive tape of uh, the conversation when uh, when the Modell family and the and the powers that be were sitting around and uh, they taking were the bids, taking the bids on on what to name the new stadium and who who should it be. And this is how they came up with taking the bid from PSI Net. All right, all right, let's get down to business. Uh, David, you got the bids for naming the stadium, David. Hey, stop playing with that yo-yo and get to the bids, okay? <laughs> okay, Dad. Here, here's the first one. Mass, mass. What is this? Massengill. Massengill. What the hell is that? Uh, sir, it's a feminine hygiene product. Massengill Stadium. Yes, sir. Has a nice ring, doesn't it? Uh, they propose putting free douching stations in each and every ladies' room in the stadium, plus an endless supply of douche bags in all the sky boxes. I got enough douche bags in the sky boxes already. <laughs> but thanks, sir. It's vinegar and water, so so we could offer it as a salad dressing. Good thinking. Good thinking. Put Massengill down as a definite maybe. Who else made a bid? Uh, let's see. This one's from the rigid. Tools. Rigid Tool Stadium? It sounds very masculine, sir. Good for the team's macho image. Mm, sounds stiff. I don't like it. Next offer. <laughs> oh, this is good. Yeah, it is. What, 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 what is it? What, what is it? How about Nick Stadium? Nix, Nix, isn't that for head lice? That's right. The Ravens will make your hair stand on end at Nick Stadium this Sunday. And they offer to hand out little sample bottles at the concession stands. That's no good. People might put that stuff on their frankfurters. Who'll we'll know the difference? I don't know. What else we got? Well, here's the last one. PSI Net. What the hell is that? It's an internet company. I don't like it. PSI Net's hard to say. Sir. People will call it Pissing It Stadium. Sir, look at the bid. They're right. offering $105 million for 20 years. Well, piss on it. They got a deal. They got a deal. Piss on it stadium. Yeah, piss on it stadium. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Very piss good. on it stadium. The Sklar brothers are up now. Yeah. Yeah. So what's so, what's new, what's new and interesting with you? You know, Ken? it's interesting because we were in Minneapolis and we uh, we've done and some traveling lately. Been back in St. Louis. It doesn't, where we're it, it doesn't matter where you go. Local news yes. is the same. They've no gotten what. absurd. Local yeah. television news is they get so excited when they get that new piece of technology like the Doppler radar. They're like yeah, Nextrad yeah. satellite tracking system or the helicopter in our case. Yeah, exactly. You got the yeah, helicopter. Yeah, Baltimore just got helicopter. Let me uh, tell you something about the I, helicopter. That's in, perfect. This is perfect because <laughs> news News Channel Four in New York, the NBC affiliate. It had their helicopter chopper four. Yeah. Everyone's got the traffic helicopter. This was the best. How did we know about it? Because there's like a commercial. They had a commercial for it. That they're a commercial for the traffic helicopter. Just for the helicopter. Right, right. And what's worse is that like a couple months ago, Chopper Four went down in the Hudson River. Oh, and then they still, still run in the commercial. The commercial. <laughs> it's like five, first of and all. Then, and then what's worse is that the commercial. All right, it's on a lot. That's bad. The commercial is like five minutes long. Yeah. Randy and I, we're like, <laughs> it's, it's just a traffic, traffic helicopter. helicopter. <laughs> all right. But uh, you watch the commercial, they make you believe it's like Jesus with a propeller. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Five minutes on. Five minutes on. What? It's after the a, first, after the first minute, what else can you say about it? It's just a helicopter. And it was so funny. If you watched the commercial closely, you would have seen that by minute two, they did run out of things to say about the helicopter. But they kept going. So for the rest of the commercial, all they did was try to make standard helicopter features sound like technological breakthroughs. All throughout the rest of the commercial, they were like, Chopper 4. With airborne capabilities. <laughs> Chopper 4. With a self-propelling... Propeller. <laughs> Chopper four. With seats. Ch seats. <laughs> what? <laughs> and seriously, if you're going to go on for five minutes about a helicopter, this thing better be Blue Thunder. Thank okay? you. Okay? We want to hear this phrase in the promo. Chopper four. We open fired on Channel 7's Wussy News Van. <laughs> <laughs> Chopper 4 was the first on the scene to bring the bloody photos. Chopper 4. Chopper 4. Chopper 4 went down mysteriously in the Hudson River. And Chopper 4 was the first on the scene. Coincidence? Or Chopper 4. <laughs> The, the, first the, the way we see it, we're twice as good as Chopper 2. Chopper 4? <laughs> <laughs> Channel 7 has a van, but can it fly? Can it? Ch -ch 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 Chopper. Chopper 4. <laughs> Soon the entire news broadcast will be brought to you from directly inside of Chopper 4. News, Chopper 4, sports, Chopper 4, weather, Chopper 4. traffic. Traffic, oddly enough, will still be done from the studio. But for everything else... <laughs> It's Chabba Vol. Who's your new source? Chabba Vol. Who's your eye in the sky? Chabba Vol. Who shot Tupac Shakur? Chabba Vol. <laughs> Who can turn the world on with a smile? Mary Tallaboo. Who's out of sorts? Chabba Vol. Screw you. Chabba Vol. And your sister. Da -da 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 -da. Para todos sus noticias, El Chapa Cuatro. <laughs> Ricky's got a real big hit now, a real girl's teenage heart drive. They don't know little Ricky's secret, he prefers to kneel and bob. He 
he's into real weird stuff now Fudge pack and plastic dolls He needs a larger rodent To inspect his massive bowels He injects the little critters With a hit of stiff cocaine He makes sure that he's cut their claws To minimize his pain Stuffing gerbils is insane Upside, inside out He's doing the gerbil polka He is gay, no doubt He's doing the gerbil polka His fingers devil red And his fur is the color mocha He will thrash about He's doing the gerbil polka Doing the gerbil polka Doing the gerbil polka Woke up in New York City, sleeping near his habit trail. He knows if the police caught him, he would surely go to jail. He coats their fur with Vaseline before they will ascend. And ties ropes around their tail so he can use them once again. Burrowing into his rear end. Kelly, you grew up in the city, right? Yeah, in D.C. Yeah? Northeast D.C. Was, was, was St. Patrick's Day uh, big in the hood? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, not particularly. You know, uh, <laughs> we were struggling to get Martin Luther King's birthday back then. <laughs> we didn't really give a damn about St. Patrick's really? Day. Because <laughs> I understand now St. Patty's Day in the hood. Yeah. Is is turning into a really an event? Yeah, yeah. really. That's I've been out of the hood too long. Check yeah. it out. This year, you're invited to celebrate St. Patty's Day in the hood with Death Row Records' brand new album, Straight Out of Mother in Dublin. That's right, they're all here. You'll get such old school favorites as Bust Me That Shillelagh, Bust My Mother in Blarney Stone, and Snoop Doggy O Dog's Gangsta Classic, Oh Danny Boys. Yes, whether you're done with the IRA or simply hanging with NWA, Straight Out of Mother in Dublin is just for you. I don't know. Kathy Madigan. So uh, you're on the road. You're doing your thing. That's all I do is travel. And I decided to see somebody here smoking besides me. And I decided because yeah, I was right. uh, in Las Vegas last week that I got to quit because I saw a reason to quit. Like, if you want to see a reason to quit smoking, especially if you're a woman, just go to any of those casinos and go directly to that nickel slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> you see these little old ladies. They're, I swear, they're like 900 years old and they're still smoking. I don't uh, know how they made uh, it this far. Is, most of them are under 50. <laughs> yeah, but just hang around and wait to hear them talk for a minute. You know? Yeah. Well, Stay, I, oh, God. Um, I the... just need one more roll of nickels. And, uh, <laughs> and a cocktail. What's it take to get a cocktail around here? <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I did get to see in Las Vegas. I saw Don King up close and in person. And but, I've waited a solid, oh, 12 years to see that guy's hair up close. Because even as a woman, I do not know how you get your hair to do that all the time. <laughs> I stared at him for like a half hour. I'm like, well, I guess one day you just walk into a barber and go, I want to look like I'm always falling out of a building. <laughs> And then spray it. Yeah. And then he pulls a little troll doll out of his pocket and goes, this is the look I'm shooting for. Yeah, it looks like the little rust yeah. doll. He was having a big press conference because Mike Tyson said he fired him. And Don King said, no, you did not. You can't fire me, which I could care less. I always like the two months before a Mike Tyson fight where you get to listen to every five foot nine moron like my brothers that go, well, I would get in the ring with Mike Tyson for a million dollars. I'm like, yeah, I bet you would. And then. 20 years from now, we'd see that follow-up interview with you on CNN drooling, going, well, I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> I'm eating solid foods again, <laughs> and I can squeeze the ball. You can squeeze the ball. Who would kill you? Yeah. You know? You know now I mean, they're saying Mike Tyson's broke. Did you read that? I did. Mm -hmm. That he's yeah. only got $150,000 liquid cash. You know, for five years, I'm not making this up. He paid a guy whose name is Crocodile. It was called verbal support. Crocodile's only job was to follow Mike around before a fight and after the fight and tell him he was great. 
It's all he had to do. No, I'm not kidding. It How was, do you get that job? I don't know, well, but I thought, wouldn't that be cool? That's what I want. I want, like, if I am on stage for an hour and I suck, I want to get off stage and have some guy named Alligator going, no, you're a very funny lady. They are just a stupid bunch of people. Oh, yeah. You're clever. They're drunk. You're witty. They're tired. You're a funny, funny, funny lady, Miss Madigan. Oh, yeah. Ha, ha. Chuckle, chuckle. You, you are a teeny tiny laugh factory, Miss Madigan. You, you clever, they drunk. Oh, yeah. Don't you worry about you. You got it together. That is a stupid crowd. Stupid. Every now and then. What are your, a couple of your favorite towns? Uh, I have to say Vegas. Cause, well, I'll tell you, weird places. I went to China to do comedy. Now, how weird is that? Oh, do they understand you? Well, they called and they said, can you and two other comics come? And I said, well, I'll come. I go, but I don't get this at all. I mean, there's a billion Chinese. There's a billion of you and not one of you's funny. <laughs> that is so sad that you have to fly my retarded butt all the way to China to entertain you. Yeah, but how do they get the jokes? They don't, really. They're just polite. Oh. You know? <laughs> oh. You know, like, eh, don't look at me, man. I don't speak Chinese. You don't speak English. English, bad booking, Wong. I don't know what to tell you. I hated it. I hated it. I did not like China. It was like a giant Where's Waldo book, and I was Waldo. <laughs> I, I said to the other comic, I'll go, man, if there's such a thing as reincarnation, I was never Chinese because none of this is ringing a bell. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they're loud. Like, when you ask a question, the uh -huh. answer always comes back 20 times louder. Like, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Bathroom right down the hall! It's like, okay. <laughs> I'm right here. Uh, that's why you had to build this wall around this country. You're so loud. Other countries for calling going, hey, Maggie, keep it down with that. <laughs> We're in Mexico trying to take a nap right now. We, we can hear you, yeah. and it's very irritating. They're, yeah. Well, they're serious people. Chop, chop, bang, bang, worky, worky, no jokey, jokey. <laughs> <laughs> they're high, they're strung out, you know? Me love you a long time. Yeah. Chop, chop, There's bang. a billion of them, you know? Worky, I'm like, hey, can you imagine looking for an apartment, you know? <laughs> hey, am I the first one to look at this? No. 482,000 people want this apartment, too. Oh, okay, whatever. Uh -huh. I'm not a people person. No. <laughs> really? No. You're in the wrong yeah. business. I mean, as soon as I get on airplanes and somebody tries to talk, you know, it's not where you're from. I just go, you know what? I have a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of go, oh, okay. <laughs> End of conversation. Yeah, no, yeah. that's from waiting tables too long. You just learn to hate people. Yeah. You know, I, but I'll tell you, there's some times where I, I completely know what Freddie Prinze was going through when he decided, <laughs> I'm out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. could see if there happened to be a revolver in that drawer. <laughs> and, I was in so and you know what's really crazy That's is this, this is stuff that, like, only people staying in a lot of hotels would notice. Like, uh, the really good hotels lock their windows. Sure. Like, yes. you can't yeah. open them, like, uh -huh. at a Hyatt or a Marriott. I'm like, well, who would jump out of a Marriott? <laughs> yeah. You don't jump out of it. You jump out of a Super 8. Yes. That's what you jump out of. <laughs> yeah. And those windows are wide open. Yeah. Have at it. They yeah. don't care. Yeah. Like you can't take a chair and throw it through the window exactly. first anyway, right? Yeah. The hotels, the only bad part of the whole job is the flying. Every yeah. time I sit in coach, I swear to God, that flight attendant always comes back with this big stack of papers and go, would you be interested in reading a free Wall Street Journal? And I'm, all, I'm looking at her going, lady... If I was interested in reading the Wall Street Journal, I probably wouldn't be sitting in coach. Yeah. You know, we would like the Inquirer back here. <laughs> What's up with the John Benet Ramsey case? That's the crap I'm looking to know. Yeah. See the curtain? There's big divider. Smart people up front, morons in the back. They have computers. We have Nintendo. Are you seeing the pattern here, ma'am? They're closing business deals. We're opening beers. We don't have a plan. That's why I don't even like going in first class because they all have computers and it intimidates me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have one. I, I have a know. typewriter and I think that's just fine. Yeah. And like my brother's, one of my brother's big computer freak and he saw me typing a complaint letter to the TWA and he goes, nobody's going to take you seriously if you type that. You have to do that on a computer. I go, they're going to take it very seriously because there's only three people left in America with typewriters and two of them are serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> VH2 presents Behind the Tunes. This week's Behind the Tunes subject, Scooby-Doo. He was Hollywood's highest paid four-legged superstar. In 1969, you couldn't turn on Saturday morning TV without hearing, huh? but he let it go to his head. When his contract ran out, Scooby demanded triple his existing salary, and when Hanna-Barbera offered only to double his money, Scooby walked out. The golden age of Scooby-Doo was over, and it scattered Scooby's inner circle to the four corners of the earth. Shaggy, the most fragile of the Scooby entourage, was the first to meet with personal disaster. Like cops raided my place at four in the morning. They must assume they'd find my pad reeking of pot with bales and bales of it up to the rafters. They were really surprised, though, 
because everybody thought I was a real, hardcore dopehead. But hey man, it was acting. Next thing I know, some cop comes out of the bathroom, grinning and holding up half a joint. It was a plant. They framed me. Shaggy went off to San Quentin for a hard 10 to 15 under the tough Reagan drug crackdown. He worked in the prison laundry and was repeatedly sodomized by other inmates. Finally, he came under the protection of another prisoner from Hollywood, Charles Manson. People got Charlie all wrong like he's a great guy. He taught me to play guitar. Then there was Thelma. After Scooby got us fired, my life just went spinning out of control. I didn't have any reason anymore to, um conceal my sexual orientation. So one day I wake up like in a dream and I'm wearing leather and chains and I'm riding a big purple Harley in the Dykes on Bikes Parade. Then I saw this guy in the crowd holding up a sign, Thelma, God loves you, repent. And I knew I was saved. Thelma underwent months of intensive counseling with the ex-gay ministries, shedding herself of her lesbian lifestyle. Today, she lives a quiet life as a suburban housewife in an undisclosed city on the East Coast. I like nothing better than sending the kids off to school and cooking up a big bunch of cookies for when they come home. Fred and Daphne did what everyone thought they'd do. They got married in high style at the Beverly Hills Hotel and then jetted off to Fiji for a honeymoon they thought would never end. We figured why not? We were young, we were rich, and we figured there'd be plenty of offers waiting for us when we got back. But when the money ran out and we came back to Los Angeles, flying coach this time, our agent didn't even return our calls. Nobody wanted us. Not even for a sitcom. Yeah, uh, we were up for a his and hers detective show once, but uh, that fairy Rock Hudson got it with Susan St. James instead. Fred hit the bottle hard. The once glamorous couple moved from apartment to apartment, going down the Hollywood rental scale step by step, until finally, with no credit or credibility, they reached rock bottom. I started turning tricks, anything for Fred, but when he started beating me up, I knew I had to get out. Once rid of Fred's dead weight, Daphne picked herself up and became an acting coach for young up-and-coming tunes. Among her star clients, Stimpy of Ren and Stimpy fame. And she also nurtured the careers of the twins on the hit Rugrats cartoon series. Fred took another path. When Daphne left me, I, I just wanted to end it, so uh, I hitchhiked out to the desert. Uh, you know, I figured I'd let a rattlesnake bite me or whatever, and, and I'd die. By the time I got to Barstow, I, I was delirious. That's when I ran into these uh, uh, Hari Krishna guys, right out in the middle of the desert. They took me in, and that's when I changed my name to Bakshi Harumbunba. Want to see my godhead? And that leaves the star himself, not seen in public in nearly 30 years, known to the new generation of young fans only from reruns. Scooby sank into a private hell all his own. It took many months of investigation before VH2 cameras finally got him in the viewfinder outside of a taco stand in Santa Monica, California. At first, unrecognizable, but from his fur and markings, undoubtedly, it was him. Scooby-Doo, bloated up to over 400 pounds. Mr. Doo, huh? we're from VH2 behind the tunes. <gasps> you are Scooby-Doo, aren't you? No, no, leave me alone. <laughs> Scooby-Doo, where have you been? <laughs> Our videographers sustain neck and back injuries in the confrontation. A lawsuit and criminal charges are pending. Don't miss the next VH2 Behind the Tunes when we track down that biracial cartoon pioneer, Bosco. I've got a song I'd like to share with you. Back in 1932, in a sleazy bordello, Grandma worked her fingers to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> While others were baking cookies Grandma was selling nookie to lonely men So they wouldn't be alone And they say she was the best laid That's how she kept the rent paid She's seen a lot of dick in her day <laughs> she seen a lot of dick in her day yeah miles and miles of packer have come her way yeah. yes she knew them and she blew them and for 50 she'd even screw them lord she's seen a lot of dick in her day in her day. Hello, welcome to 
Wrong Way Kitchen. I take your order, please. I highly recommend the combo number five. Oh, nice. Yeah. Combo one, two, three, four, five. Everybody love a Chinese steam or fry from the Chinese restaurant around the corner. So you say you want some wonton soup, I bring your order. Roast duck is the special all this week. We fry a deep dish because our duck is cheap. You like egg for young, diced chicken, chow fun and saga. We are serving dim sum, all of it yum yum. So what can I get you really big on that pork? We got the chopsticks, but please use our fork. Everything is fried, it's so good, like a dumpling. So just give us a ring. A little beef and broccoli, you got to try. A little mixed vegetable and white rice. A little sweet and sour is all you need. A little bit of salt and no MSG. A little bit of general chose chicken. A little bit of romaine, I can't say. It. A little bit I got one, too, yesterday that I'm going to read. Yeah. It says, uh, no, Dear don't. Mickey, I really enjoy your show when you're on with KML. Do me a favor. Tell Kirk to quit picking on Mark because we think he's obnoxious ass. <laughs> <laughs> Signed, sincerely yours, Concerned. Well, thank you. Lopez, is that your pen name now? Concerned? Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I no, found that it's Ed Kiernan. No, 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 it's C Uncerned. Yeah. C Uncerned. <laughs> Mine's a C Uncut. I don't know what that means, but... Ooh. Oh. Hey, uh, that, that's a very cunning stunt. Yeah. <laughs> from, a cunning, from a cunning little runt. Uh, and if you had a camera, you'd be Alan Funt. How, how many letters are there? We can do this with. Is it the thrill of the kill or the thrill of the hunt? <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. Because I tell you, if you can't get a hit, you can always bunt. Bunt. Somebody go ahead just when, kick when you the C word out. When you have. When you have <laughs> so we can be done with this. When you, can I say it? When you have no, sex, I would love to no, bust no, that out. God, when you it. have sex, do you do you usually grunt? <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. I usually smoke a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> and by, and my my my, what a stunt! <laughs> oh, we used stunt already. No, we yeah. did. Did we did use we, stunt? Yeah. Put if you have. I don't think we used stunt. We use I stunt? think they were. You can use anything you want. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Hey. The C words are open for you there. <laughs> you know I'll bust it out. You're tempting the wrong man. I got I got pregnance under my belt now. What the hell do I care? That's why I you mean, don't. You know that's why you don't call your fraternity a frat. Because you wouldn't call your country a tree. <laughs> <laughs> And now, another lesson from the Holy Bible, East Baltimore edition. It was a cold December night. So cold, even the winos could feel the chill, and they all huddled up in a doorway sharing a bottle of Mad Dog. That made them feel warmer. And they was watching Butch's Camaro, because he gave me each a dollar to make sure nobody dicked with it. And lo, from out of nowhere, a bright, shining angel came unto him, and she was a babe. I mean, she could have worked at night shift. She was probably from Roland Park or Ruxton, you know, someplace classy. And the wino said thus, Hey, stay away from that freaking Camaro. And the angel retorted unto them, Fear not. I ain't here to f*** with Butchie's car. I bring good news. Jeez, what was I thinking? She looked like a chick from far away. Anyway, one wino said, Good news? We're freezing our butts off and we're almost out of Mad Dog. And you say you got good news? How about a fin? That would be good news. But the angel said, Shut your yap. For on this night is born a savior, who shall be a boon to all the people, this side of the county line. You'll call him Jesus. Just follow the lights of the police helicopter to find his birthplace. And then, the three winos did follow yonder police helicopter, and it led him up to the hill and into the center of town in shock trauma. There, amongst all the gunshot victims, knife stabbings, and other ingrates and degenerates, was a baby. 
He's wrapped in swaddling hospital linens and lying in an incubator. And a nurse, caged upon the three winos, all scraggly and drunk up and smelling of pee, and she said, Get me the hell out of my emergency room! But the three winos said, we're here to see Jesus. And immediately, the nurse took him to the third room on the left because there was no more room at the end desk. Anyway, there, the three knelt down upon Jesus. Well, Jesus. Jesus Martinez. He's a migrant worker from the eastern shore. He had a hangnail. Sam, what the hell are you doing in my room, man? I made you a gun, man. So saith the scriptures. Hallelujah. All the love and warm wishes are here The most beautiful time of the year When the kids will all sing and they'll play In our town come Christmas Day Cause it's Christmas in Baltimore Hey, you little sister's a whore! With your loved ones right by your side I said I loved you, but I lied well, it's Christmas in Baltimore. Hey, how about a lift to the liquor store? It's my favorite time of the year. But everybody knows what to do. Down at the mall to steal a gift or two. From Blair up to Catonsville. Uh, you can hear the folks sing it still. Another Christmas in Baltimore. Let's take from the rich and steal from the poor. And the kids there, right by your side. Man, my brain cells are fried. Yeah, Christmas in Baltimore. Man, we're gonna get some booty for sure. Well, it better be good this year. Dear Santa, I want all my gifts wrapped in ribbons and bows. I gotta get something for the hose. Give me some rims for my Camaro, a, a new bow and arrow, a bottle of Jack, some really good crack. I, I gotta get rid of the clapping. Oh, I need a new rat trap. Hey, how about a natty bow beer can boat? And, man, I sure hope Santa can read what I wrote. All the love and warm wishes are here. The most beautiful time of the year. When the kids will all sing and play in our town on Christmas. Blah, blah. I heard you before. With your loved ones right by your side. Oh no! That hooker's a guy! It's Christmas in Baltimore! I swear, hon, it's just a cold sore! It's my favorite time! Don't do the crime! Don't ask me why! If you can't do the time! It's my favorite time of the year! Look it, I got a lump of coal, I got a brick, and a home detention bracelet. Ain't Christmas great?